Managers of Reddit, what was the worst case of I demand to speak to the manager you've experienced? I once had to redo a 500 print photo order of wedding photos. At 1am, we were at 24 hour store for a woman who was flying out of Houston at 5am because she knew what she was doing and edited them herself all online and cut off the heads of everyone in the photos. Everyone, all of them half heads or no heads. It shut down my lab for 4 hours, 2 hours for the headless horseman photos, 2 hours for the redos. I couldn't take any digital orders for that whole time. I had to reroute them in the system to our nearest location and have our auto dialer leave the customers messages, letting them know their orders would be ready by the time specified. Only at a store 25 minutes away. I have had jobs where people screamed in my face. I currently am in a career where I come home with bruises and bumps and scrapes from unhappy special needs students, and I have never cried at any job but this one. I literally had to go have a cry in the bathroom on my lunch break because it was so freaking frustrating and I had just gotten the promotion. At my shop we have a strict no return policy unless it is manufacturer error of course. Basically if you break it or have buyer's remorse your crap out of luck. We have 3 signs in our store that say no returns or refunds and on every receipt. This lady had buy a remorse because we bought something 3 days before and we put it on sale. She wanted to return it and then buy it back. I refused to do that because we do not need to have sales. She started flipping out demanding saying I'm too dumb to be a manager and for me to get the manager. I walked into the back office. Waited 30 seconds and walked back out and said hi I'm the manager today how may I assist you. She then said she wanted to speak to the general manager. I repeated the process. She then asked to speak to the owners. I told her that the owners are silent owners and leave me in charge to do as I want. I make the decisions for everything. She insisted I should give her their cell phone numbers. When I refused to give them her number she said if you don't call them right now and give me that price I'll write a review. I laughed and told her that's fine. Leave one. I have 65 star reviews and 2 4 star reviews. That's it. 1 1 star is fine. Work for a passenger railroad in Cincinnati. 23. M. Wear reflective high vis shirt and pants. We have to run ahead of our dinner train and flag each crossing. Stopping traffic due to a ridiculous rule set by the railroad we run on. Mind you, we go 7 10 miles per hour. Fairly easy to keep up with. Saturday, I drive up to a crossing with the lights flashing already, and start flagging cars across since the train is at least one minute away. The middle-aged man drives up to me, stops before the crossing. I wait harder at him to come through. He speeds up beside me, and stops on the crossing. I don't know you're with the railroad, you could just be some yahoo art. Okay sir, continue on. The train is right there, why should I listen to some young kid like you because if you don't, you're getting hit by the freaking train. Now move, it'll be speaking with your manager as he drives off. I get pee and throw flag on ground, an hour later I'm back, as the train goes the other way. My general manager, 23, M, 6 feet tall is standing with me helping protect the crossing. Man returns, yells at him who's your manager. I'd like to report him for being an butthole. Boss looks at me, turns to him and says I am. Now get the frick off my railroad. Guy gently drives away. TLDR. Older man stops on railroad tracks. Is butthole. Manager is bigger, better butthole. I work in the admissions department at a zoo. We work closely with the membership department and are really friendly with each other. When people purchase membership they get a card that says their name. How many adults? How many children? If they are allowed to bring in guest, etc. The card says clearly that you must show it per card. Sometimes we are friendly or lazy and ask for one id for the whole group. Well a week ago some guy didn't have his id. IDK how he drove to the zoo since you need a form of id to drive. We told him that without an id we can't let him in. The guy got mad and started screaming at us. Saying random crap to us. He demanded to see a manager. Good thing our manager, for admission not membership, was on site. She explained to guy that without it we can't let him go in, showed him on the card where it explains to show it. The guy screams at her and the know who paid the membership I should be allowed to go in without it. My manager responded no it no entry. He asked her to see a manager. Her response was I am the manager. He then asked if there was someone higher than her he can speak to. 
So she told him if you want to do anything you have to speak with membership. So he goes to membership and what they told us is he was being in butthole and screaming that he paid for it and blah blah blah. The manager for membership was called and because he scream at him they deny his entry to the zoo. He might be right. Sounds like he belongs in the zoo with the rest of the animals. Rundown. Couple staying in double room. Female. 35. Male. 39. The male is built like a stone crap house. Totally bald and looks aggressive as frick. Female is like an Instagram model. Covered in tattoos and loads of makeup. Very pretty though. Stay. Two nights. Additional. They went to the same club as the group of 1921 years olds in my family room downstairs. Four people. So, they came in the first day and seemed like really nice people, but after 30 minutes they were having freaking vigorously for hours. How do I know because their room, room 2 is directly above my living room. Whatever people do frick, it's natural. Except for the noise coming from these two made me think there was more like 8-9 people in there. So that night they started arguing, mostly him, but it was non-stop. They went out, the kids downstairs went out, and at 2 a.m., they all came back together. The man and woman went into the ground floor room and had an after party to 5am. At which point a guest left to go to the airport 3 hours early so he could actually get some rest. The man and woman went upstairs at 5am too. Only to proceed back to frick until 9am. Around midday they went out. Then came back arguing. I should note that at this point. They had slammed every door in the house whenever they used one. She knocked on my door with a broken picture frame which has my rules and contact fire safety info on it. It was obvious that they had slammed the door open and it smashed. She handed it to me and said it just fell off I said okay he'll go vacuum up the glass out of the carpet. I said no need to worry they are only cheap frames. Okay, we're just going out they went out, they came back one hour later. They went into room 1 downstairs again and I had my flat door open because I was busy in the gust house and I heard them say we just went to the last post for breakfast blah blah everything after that was pretty normal. One week later I get this. Title. Manager ought to be more friendly and care about his guests. Pros. Clean rooms. Cons. When closing the door the information sheet was held up by a screw and a bit of glass over it which broke on my foot when I knocked and told the manager he didn't care or apologies. We had to leave early to go to a hospital as I had glass in my foot. Ugh the audacity. What did she expect a refund or something? It's funny because they don't know me at all. And if they did they would know I'm overzealous when it comes to making sure people are cleaned and band-aided or bandaged up in case of injury. It's like saying the queen ran into your local pub and down someone's pint and ran away. Also the hospital part what a joke. Our local A&E takes a minimum of 4 hours to be seen. They were only gone for an hour at most. An elderly gentleman demand I serve him and a cooked fish because dark fried fish is bad for his colon cancer. He proceeded to tell me to stick my hand in a deep fry for a few seconds and compare it to the color of the fish. I started getting crappy back at him at this point, and he kept saying he had colon cancer like it gave him a pass for being an butthole. I was so uncomfortable. This guy also came into my restaurant a few weeks prior to this incident and threw a fit because he claimed we didn't wash our hands. I invited him back to the kitchen area, if he wanted, and he threatened to call the Heath department. His colon cancer. Getting crappy. Being in butthole. Noticing a theme here. I'm an on-floor supervisor for a call center for a benefits admin for roughly 62 high-scale client companies. I get a lot of those calls. However to take the cake. 1. This dude berated me for 30 minutes because we cancelled his Cobra Dental because he never paid us. Quote it is not my fault I didn't check my mail for 3 months. So I didn't know I had a bill to pay. 2. This lady whose mom was dying in hospice. The only reason I didn't hang up on her. And screamed how we were all freaking stupid moronic punes because we used the term POA process when she had a guardianship. Not a POA. She was so hung up about the term of the word that she would hang up and call back and get someone else just to insult them. This resulted in almost 20 calls just to call my agents freaking idiots and rand how she was a high paid lawyer and she would sue us. Again. Because we said the words power of attorney. Which BTW is the official process name designated by that company. 
lady got a body lotion as a gift. This particular lotion was 5 plus years old so I explained that if she returned it and didn't exchange it she would get back dollar sign 1. She argued that the price sticker said $11.50 you're ripping me off how dare you blah blah. Yes mom. So I offered to show her something else so she can get her money's worth. She demands to see the ingredients of every product we have because they are all poison and she doesn't want to be poisoned. She starts asking me how each ingredient was made and sourced. I said I was happy to give her the number for customer service. She said she wanted something lavender bc she heard from a magazine that lavender is relaxing and a stress reliever. I show her every lavender item we have and she says she wants one that doesn't have poison in it. Finally convince her to get the lavender perfume to use on her linens. I tell her I need her to do the exchange and she accuses me of trying to steal her identity. She flashes open her wallet and closes it saying that's all you're gonna get. My manager had been watching this entire situation and finally piped up to reinforce that we couldn't do the exchange without Theod and she called us both ridiculous unhelpful thieves who were trying to poison her and then steal her identity. Long story short she read her id number and left. Next day she comes storming and demanding to speak to me because I sold her a defective product and she said that the perfume wouldn't spray. I took the cap off and sprayed it. The mist cloud was in the air nowhere near her and she started coughing and dry heaving and waving her hands to swat it away screaming at me that how dare I spray it because it was gonna poison her. I explained that she would have to press harder on the plunger in order for it to spray but it was not defective and I'd be happy to exchange it for another but they are all the same and would need to be pressed equally as hard. She then comically tried to spray it with the weakest finger strength I've ever seen. Then left in a huff about how we wasted her money. TL. DR. Psycho lady tries to return 5 year old lotion for full price. Then accuses us of poisoning her and stealing her identity. I run a comic book store. One day we're running a Pokemon card tournament. Woman comes in with two kids, 5 and 8 yo, and another kid's friend, 8. They show up, pay their entry fee. She then tells us that they've never played before. I'm sitting there like okay, hard mode time. I can do this. I've got an hour to build 3 decks and teach them how to play. I've got this. 20 minutes goes by and I'm finally at the teaching stage. Everyone is having a great time. I turn to the youngest kid and ask him to read a card for me and he says I can't read. What the frick? So I'll let the kids play and call the mother. I tell her that her kid can't read and can't participate in the tournament. She wants to leave him there. I want her to come pick him up. There was 2 staff members and 24 kids. No way I can keep track of one kid not participating. So I hit her with the I'm not a daycare line. What a mistake. This woman goes off, yelling, screaming, demanding the owner, etc. I tell her she's got to come get him and I hang up. 15 minutes later she's in the store, screaming and yelling. She demands the owner's cell number. Frick no I'm not giving you that. She starts calling me names, insinuating that I'm being mean to her because I don't get laid. At this point I ban her and her kids. Drop everyone from the tournament and tell them to leave or I'll call the cops for trespassing. They leave. End of story. Right? Wrong? Next day my co-worker gets a call yes. This is Constable Ziz and I need the personal contact information for me. And owner, as woman's name, would like to press charges. My co-worker, bless her heart, says that she needs to see a badge before giving out that information and then ends the call. In this woman's infinite wisdom she got her husband to impersonate a police officer to try and get my personal cell number to harass me. I call my local police precinct. Unfortunately the call wasn't recorded so it's shaky grounds to press charges so that's where the story ends. I was young. Bar manager at a small town bar joint. 11pm Monday night. We usually closed around 10, but the KM and I were watching Adult Swim. Lady and her young 10 at most daughter. Guessing come in. Lady, I want a martini. Me. Sure. Vodka or gin. Shaken or stirred. Sweet. Dry. Perfect. Whatever you like. Lady, I said martini. I repeat. She says. A martini. A freaking martini. You know what that is. Right? I repeat. Lady, just make me a freaking martini. Me. Mom, you obviously are confused on your order. 
I don't think I can serve you, especially since you are escorting and responsible for a child. You may be intoxicated. She shoots a C. Manager. Now, I literally do a slow-mo 360 and flip my hat around. My bartender said some B was giving him a bowl full of a spoon's worth of bee soup. What's up? She demanded my name. Told me she was calling the governor in the press about it. I told her, tell the news people we don't serve buttholes here. My boss, owner, reviewed the tape and said it was the funniest thing he'd seen since Judge Judy aired. I was doing sales. I forgot what the call was exactly but it went along something like this. Hey I'm Jusekid313 from AMC am I speaking to John Doe? Oh uh, yeah. I spoke to you recently about. I'm sorry I don't understand your accent are you even in America? Yeah. I spoke to you in. Town. We talked about. Service. All this was true. I have no accent either. Listen here you Indian B. I'm not Indian. I'm Russian. Whitest guy you could see. I want to talk to your freaking manager to get taken off your freaking list. Alrighty. I hand my phone to my super American boss who loves to argue. He started to argue with the other guy on the phone. Screams frick you buddy. And that is how I had to pull out my phone out of drywall. Well I work for a subcontractor and once I had to let a guy go the second week of his employment. He came into work high as frick and I told him to go home and sober up. Came in drunk. Came in and didn't work. Anyway he told his father some lies about the circumstances about me letting him go. So the father comes in and is really angry with me for destroying his son's chance of getting clean. He chews me out for a good 5 minutes. All I said was your son came into work so high I had to tell him to go home and sober up 3 days out of the 10 he worked here. Not a manger but a friend of mine is an assistant manager. I have this friend whose mother is has one of the worst cases of narcissism that I've ever seen. Also very much a sadist. Anyways, my friend works at a girly store and this lady buys crap. Asks everyone how it looks and then proceeds to try to milk my friend for a discount. My friend instantly says no and then continues to be. Later, about 2-3 weeks later she apparently comes in asking if she could return the items. My friend instantly says no, because of their return policy. The lady got sassy mean and began asking in a very rude voice I wanna talk to your manager. Friend says hi, I'm a manager. Lady leaves instantly. Lady tries again later, like no. Obligatory not a manager but I witnessed this. I work at an airport for two crappy budget airlines. I just do the cleaning on planes. But I was out in the concourse waiting on a plane to unload before I could go and clean it. A man walked up to one of the gate agents and told her that he had an emergency and needed to be on the next plane to Seattle. Well, he had a ticket for a flight to Denver that was boarding in 15 minutes. He had already checked in, paid, sent his bags to the plane going to Denver, and gone through security. The gate agent explained to him that we didn't have any Seattle flights that day, and he wouldn't have been able to get his money back for the Denver flight. He looked confused and said that a Delta flight was leaving for Seattle in 10 minutes. He wanted on that plane and he wanted it free of cost. Gate agent told him no, she couldn't possibly do that and he started to get upset. Talked on the phone to gate agent's supervisor who told him the same thing. Eventually a manager walked up and explained that we don't interact with Delta at all. If he wanted a Delta ticket he'd have to go back to the ticket counter and buy our ticket through Delta. Even then the Seattle flight was in the final boarding process and he couldn't even walk from where he was standing to the concourse Delta is in on the time. The guy just kept repeating that he had an emergency and we needed to put him on that flight, which we couldn't possibly do. He was a super entitled jackass. Eventually the guy walked off and didn't get on the Denver flight, but his bags sure did. TLDR. Guy on budget airline flight to Denver wants us to switch his flight to a Delta flight to Seattle for free. We don't work with Delta. Guy doesn't understand how airlines work. He doesn't get on any flights that day. His bags go to Denver. Not the full manager, but assistant in rentals. Had a woman who booked the previous night. We got massively overbooked. 
simply because I spent an hour on the phone with Travelocity and your company to get this reservation. This reservation means I have a car kept fighting me until the district manager took over and basically kicked her out because she'd gotten reservations to override the system and put it through. Even though we didn't have vehicles, we had a friend of a girl at our airport location book a car without asking day off. Had her fight me for 20 minutes over 5 bucks because her friend didn't have the courtesy to check if we even had a car for her. So this is back in my days of managing gentlemen's clubs. Got called over to the bank. Place where change is made. Funny money off your credit card is charged etc. To help someone out. Get over there and guy goes off on me. WTF. I can't talk to you. You're too dang tall. You're hurting my neck. Get me someone shorter. For reference I'm 6 feet 8 tall, round about 350 pounds. So I call over the other manager, who happens to be 5 feet 2 inches, depending on the shoes he is wearing. Guy asking for help flips out, you think this is funny, I ask for someone shorter so you call over a freaking midget, WTF. Short manager gets pee, yelling ensues between the two, ends up with midget manager punching dude in the groin and dude getting thrown out. Plenty of other fun ones but that one always makes me smile. The theater I work at has a customer appreciation week every summer where movies are free. Needless to say, every cheapskate within a 50 mile radius shows up. Not just our good customers. This makes it very, very busy. If you want a seat, you better show up 30 minutes early. Want to sit together 45 minutes. Some people come and grab tickets a couple hours early then leave, which is fine. But we warn them that they still need to come back early if they want to sit together. Well, two non-regulars that we've never seen before decide to show up 10 minutes before our most popular movie. They had gotten tickets early but wanted snacks. The line for concessions is super long and the popcorn machine is tiny and trying its best to keep up. Nevertheless, they join the line. It takes them them 20 minutes to get their popcorn and soda. They then try to find seats in the theater which is completely sold out. Surprise surprise, they can't find any, the come screaming up to the still busy concession stand, and the manager goes in and informs them that there are seats free, just not together. They say that this is unacceptable and demand we stop the movie, make everyone move so they can sit together, and completely restart the film. Um, no, my manager informs them that they should have gotten here earlier. They start screaming at her that we should have reserved seats and rope them off for people who bought tickets early. They then demanded a refund for their concessions which were somehow half gone already. 1. You did not buy tickets. They were free. 2. We do not have numbered seats. We are a small theater and aren't that fancy. Also, we don't want to deal with that crap. 3. We are not going to rope seats off so that your entitled butt can swagger in 10 minutes into the movie. My manager gave them a refund just to get them to leave. They said they were never coming back. Oh no. An hour later she gets a complaint via email about the rude employees at the theater that should be fired. It was detailed. They hadn't realized that the head manager had been helping them. She had to walk away before she replied to that one. TLDR. Get to your free movie early. Sorry for the novel. Also sorry for formatting. I'm on mobile. Not a manager but I'm an optician. A woman comes in demanding to speak with the manager immediately. Well he's with another patient so I offer to hear her out and get started on whatever problem she's having so she doesn't have to wait with nothing being done. She says no. Walks over to the manager. Interrupts the patient he's with. This patient was a guy in his 20s and was having issues with his glasses due to a big change in RX. He actually was there earlier and came back just to discuss his options with the manager. And demands that the manager stop helping the guy and help her instead. Immediately. My manager folded because it's retail and he didn't want to deal with his boss hearing about it. So the thing she was so upset about 10 freaking months ago she ordered contacts from us and had two valid prescriptions in the computer system. My co-worker ordered the wrong one for her. She only just noticed it was the brand she didn't actually want. Obviously she could see fine with them. My manager refunded her and gave her a year supply for the brand she did want. I just hope she freaking dies. She's a terrible person. I know all companies handle customer service differently but your manager seems a little thin skinned. She'll be back with another complaint expecting to be catered to now. If you are new to the channel, 
you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.